it is an experience where teaching and learning are a collaborative venture because of the small nature of the class where students are encouraged to express their thoughts, their ideas, uh, their responses to some of the reading assignments and in a certain way the students set the agenda for the, uh, for the structure of the seminar. My favorite aspect of teaching a freshman seminar uh, is really the enthusiasm of the students. Well, it's really amazing to meet those freshmen right after they arrive on campus and they're so full of enthusiasm about everything and um, they're so excited about the subject matter. I would say it's the joy and the unbounded curiosity of students just out of high school who are so excited to be launching their college careers, uncertain about the expectations for them. And in the case of Harvard students, they've been charging through high school to get where they want to be. I mean, Harvard students are spectacular no matter what, so that is one of the best things of being here. And with freshmen, they're excited, uh, they're totally engaged in the course. It reminds me of when I, you know, entered the field myself long, long ago, that incredible sort of new excitement. And they're just jumping out of their seats with, with questions. They show up early, they ask me questions after class, uh, they interrupt each other with more questions. And it's a moment of transition. And I, I see this class as that, um, as offering a really a safe and intellectually challenging space between to make the transition from high school to college. And I think they're a little overwhelmed at the beginning and I've learned myself that I can't do too much in those first couple weeks. Well I think freshmen are special because their minds are very open and for the most part they haven't decided what they're going to do and anything is possible. They haven't made up their minds, they're in the process of deciding. And it's interesting to talk to people when they're in that process of finding out what it is they want to do in the world. They come with varying degrees of skills as writers, as discussants in class. For one thing, I hadn't thought about them not having a biology background, necessarily. Of course, my seminar is on f physics, the frontiers of physics, but I specifically avoided having a lot of would-be physicists in my seminar. There are all kinds of humanists, social scientists, people from other areas of the sciences, with yet they're all very uh, interested in this subject. You know, it's, it's, both, it's interesting both for people who want to do physics and those who don't, because it might be their last uh, course telling them some, some, about some real science going on in the world. But it also, for people who ultimately want to do physics, it sort of tells them where it's all going, because you're not going to get that necessarily in your freshman physics class. Through performing, they have an opportunity to sort of embody these works that we've been discussing. My seminar co covers a very broad range of topics that are on the forefront, uh, the edge of modern physics. I, I try to give them an idea of what it's like to be a working physicist today, trying to push back the boundaries of knowledge. And of course, that's a huge set of topics to cover. And I give them some set of readings from uh, popular books, a few elementary textbooks. I want to show them some equations because you have to have some equations to be doing physics. In the beginning it was based more on my first book, Warp Passages. I mean I put a lot of work into really organizing just how where we are in physics today and how we got there, the different strands of sort of what happened in 20th century physics, you know, relativity, quantum mechanics, how it led into particle physics, the questions we're trying to answer today. So there's the lab, okay, so we have the lecture, we have the labs, we do research papers, the students do presentations, I divide the class in half, and so if we're doing uh, photosynthetic symbioses, then half of the class, well, I partner them, so 
there will be six topics that I'm not covering that they need to present on. So, uh, and those are both written and oral. And then we have field trips. Most of the course of the class time is dictated by the questions that they ask. Though I start every class with a lecture of, of half an hour, which they are interrupting me every minute because they're so, uh, actually I, I plan for 10 minutes, but that 10 minutes usually mushrooms into an hour because they have so many, so many questions. For me, and I've taught seminars on different topics, but I'd say the, the kind of central thread is to help them develop those basic skills and do so in a non-threatening environment. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of not having grades. My advice would be to think about all the things that you've studied in your life and think about what it is that you love the most and talk about that and communicate to them your love of your subject. Have fun. <laughs> These are classes that certainly need to have a solid academic core to them. But it, it's an opportunity to be creative, to give the students an opportunity to be creative, and to cut loose. And the students respond hugely if a person does that. I think it's made me reflect more on how I teach my upper level, and so that they're not so boring just lectures and doing research papers and more lectures. So I think it's actually informing my more upper level and even graduate courses. It's just a really invigorating experience. So it becomes an environment where I think teaching and learning become truly collaborative. And just as the students are learning from me, I'm learning from them. Out of all the courses that I teach at Harvard, I think the, the freshman seminar that I teach uh, has perhaps the greatest impact on students because of this intimate learning environment. And I think it is really the, the most satisfying course that I teach.